Hello everyone. In this course, we will be studying about discrete Fourier transform, or it is also called as the DFT. And then there is its improved version, or okay, we call it as a fast Fourier transform, or the short form for that is FFT. So this course is going to be, you know, we will be talking about things in detail about a DFT and FFT one by one. And uh, the basic idea of this uh, transform is like this: that supposing if you have x of n okay and if you take a dft or a discrete fourier transform you get x of k okay so dft is all about converting your x of n into x of k now typically this x of n is called as a time domain and x of k is called as frequency domain so basically we convert time domain into frequency domain now why do we call this time domain because in the time domain this n over here is basically time and to be more precise it is a discrete time so so you have discrete samples of time and when you have a discrete now this is very important that you always write a square bracket you see a square bracket here and that's a, you know a typical standard notation of denoting a discrete time if it would have been continuous it would have been x of n that would have been continuous but right now we are talking about a discrete time sequence x of n and this is n n is time because it is time domain and after you take a dft you get x of k which is frequency domain and k is frequency okay if time domain n is time then in frequency domain k is frequency and also the frequency is also discrete i am sure you would have guessed it because do you see i am again drawing a square bracket and we will keep these notations strictly will follow these okay keep a note that note of that point now in discrete fourier transform there are a lot of properties there are a lot of hidden you know treasures so to say to about this this very transform and we will be talking about these things in detail one by one but before we get to that let me quickly give you a dft formula this is a standard formula we will be using this formula to find dft of x of n given to us so dft formula you have to remember this formula that is x of k is equal to sum of n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 uh, x of n w n raised to n k now this is the standard formula of dft now basically what we do is we take this x of n time domain signal and we apply this sum and can you see a factor over here which is w n raised to n k now this is something very important we will be talking about this in detail eventually later on but then this is called as the twiddle factor okay twiddle factor and about this when you write w n raised to n k see when you write w n raised to n k it is w n raised to 1 raised to n k okay where this w n raised to 1 is e raised to minus j 2 pi by n okay now this is something you have to remember and also i hope you know this already that e raised to i theta or e raised to j theta j and i is basically the same thing okay it's the iota of a complex number this is basically a complex number and then very famous euler's relation says it is cos theta plus i sin theta okay you should know this formula also and when you have a plus sign here you see a plus sign here then this is plus here and when there is a negative sign here this is just negative over here okay this is one formula we will need eventually and we will use this formula and all these techniques uh, and we will solve some problems we will get a better understanding of what this is all about also in this uh, course we will be talking about these main topics we will be studying all the properties of dft and and to understand these properties better we will be taking uh, you know a sample question and solve that question for each and every property so that you get a better grip as well and uh, after that the next topic we'll be covering convolution again very important topic for signal processing and we'll be covering the convolution in great deal you're doing uh, we will be doing a linear convolution circular convolution dft we use dft to find all the convolutions all of that in detail okay that is going to be our you know second topic and after all this is done we will see how the fft algorithms are developed these are basically some flow graphs or algorithms or famously it is also called as butterfly diagram so we'll get into details of that but then we will do it in a very sequential manner and in the sequence that makes the best sense okay 
So, and everything will be explained with the help of problems so that you get a better grip on the topic. So that is what is coming up. So in the next topic, next, next video, we will see the first problem of DFT.